Hawks of Michigan. Hello again, everyone. Larry Adderley, Jim Bramsetter on hand for Michigan football. We have, well, we should have an offensive show here today. Tony Eason, the junior college transfer at quarterback, completing 62% of his passes for Illinois. Steve Smith, an emerging quarterback for Michigan, having a great game against Minnesota. I expect maybe 35, 40 points. You're absolutely right. We have two high-powered offenses here. Illinois throws it well. They have outstanding receivers. Michigan with their great running backs run it well. But my own theory on the game is that it isn't going to be the offense that makes a difference. The team that plays the best team defense is going to win this game. I think it's something we're going to take a look at throughout the game because we know that the offenses can score. It's the guys that keep them from scoring that's going to wind up on top. And perhaps an emotional edge to Illinois who cannot go to the Rose Bowl. And the Illini are, co are convinced that Bo Schembechler does not like junior college transfers. <laughs> and there are a lot of them here with Illinois. We'll see as they are ready for the kickoff now. And we'll get a chance to see the Illinois offense rather quick as they won the toss, elected to receive, and Haji Sheik will kick off for Michigan. A line drive that fails about the three-yard line, picked up by Wilson. And he gets it back up over the 20-yard line before Carlton Rose can catch him, along with Carl Peck. Illinois first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Offensively, you can see the way Illinois will line up, and they have junior college transfers. They Mike do. Martin and Oliver Wilson as receivers. Most of their skilled people are from junior colleges, and we'll get into that whole development and why it's such an emotional issue later in the game. He's in the throw right away. No, he's going to run because nobody's home. Out of bounds, 42 yard line. Michigan defenders fooled by that as Eason went to the offside away from all of his flooded backs and receivers, and nobody was there defensively. Well, we talked about team defense and how important it's going to be in this game to stop the offense. That time, very simple. The outside tackle, Tony Osmond, as you see the Michigan defensive lineup, just didn't get contained. And Wilson, uh, rather, Eason broke contained, got outside for a big gainer. First down, Illinois 42. And an open receiver completed to Oliver Williams, 17, knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line by Tony Jackson. Two plays and two long games for Illinois. The key to the play is the fact that Jerry Burgai, the cornerback to the sideline, lets the receiver run right by him. Tony Jackson playing the free safety gets over there late. And it's a big reception. Michigan's going to have to get a big pass rush today because Illinois will throw. As you can see up front offensively, Illinois doing a good job. First down, Michigan 25-yard line, Illinois on the move. In two plays, they have gained a bunch of yards and... A running play with Daryl Smith gets only a couple more. Second down and eight. The statistics on Tony Eason, and you can see what a sensational passing year he is having. One of the junior college transfers we are mentioning. in motion to block for Smith. First down inside the Michigan 15-yard line. They sent Calvin Thomas in motion. He got to the corner and turned it up and made a good block to bring Daryl Smith. Well, the key is Michigan comes with the blitz. Illinois picks it up. Smith then makes a good decision to get outside and around the corner since Michigan was blitzing up the middle. That team defense concept, Michigan gambling here early, trying to get the good rush on Easton by running a blitz and they catch him in a run. 14 yard line, first down Illinois. Quick start, fullback dives to about the five yard line, Calvin Thomas. Great blocking up front and Thomas is excited. Good average, but not many yards gained rushing because, of course, 80% of the Illinois offense is passing. 
Delvin Thomas is 5'11", 234 pounds inside trap, and when he gets that a steam up, I'll tell you what, he's tough to bring down. Michigan's defense really being tested here early by Illinois. Second down and two. Joe Curtis is close to a first down. I think he's got it. He does. Once again, you take a look at Michigan up front. For the most part, the defensive linemen are getting rolled over. Illinois controlling that line of scrimmage. Can't let them do that. That's part of the team defense we talked about at the head of the show. The team that is able to stop the run, make the big play defensively, is going to have the shot to win it. A first down for three, making a touchdown for Tony Eason with a great fake, and he rolled out to the weak side, and again, nobody was home. Illinois out on top, 6-0 in the opening minutes of this game. Second time in the first series, they break contain. The fake left, nobody is out there. 79, Clay Miller, 89, Carlton Rose should have had contain on the goal line, and they just never got it. Never got contain, and then it was over, as Eason had absolutely nobody to beat to get in the end zone. He made a good fake, too, on the inside handoff, but he was going all the, all the while on the rollout of his own. Nice pass to attempt the conversion. And it is up, and over the net, into the crowd, and good. Illinois takes a 7-0 lead. The fake comes this way, right at the camera. Michigan going for the fake, but there you see 89, Carlton Rose. Second time, first uh, series, uh, first drive. He's been beaten on contain. You cannot let you get beat on the goal line by your quarterback contain. Last week, Owens, he did it in the Minnesota game, and Illinois takes an early 7-0 lead here in the first quarter. Bass to kick off for Illinois. And he sends one to Stanley Edwards, about five yard line. Stanley is hit and knocked down right about the 20 yard line. Very good tackle by Brady. Seven plays, 77 yards, and the big one, that 33 yard pass from Eason to Oliver Williams, putting Illinois in front. In the first two minutes of this one. And three defensive mistakes. Cox, Michigan, big yardage, including the touchdown run by Easton in the first try. So Michigan from its own 20-yard line. Wolfo Edwards and Steve Smith, the quarterback. Anthony Carter slid out to the left, but it's Wolfo going straight ahead and for short yardage as the tackle is made by 76, John Gennata. Offensively, that is the set for Michigan most of this year. Stephon Humphrey's missing a couple games with injuries, but he's back. Receivers in the back, that's been it. Almost all is season long. Lance Wicks getting some running action, and Craig Dunaway on a tight end all over the Norm Beck. On second down and eight. The action, Smith. Cuts into a crowd and gets it at least to the 27 yard line. Squirek is there. Heaven is there. Inside linebacker from Illinois, Jack Squirek. He's been a three year starter in there. You can see why Illinois likes him. Gets to the football. He's always looking to make the tackle, he's always moving forward. It's uh, not a whole lot of lateral movement or backward movement. Two things to mention, Larry. On both occasions, they split Anthony Carter wide as we take a look at the Illinois defensive set. And both times, Michigan has run away from Anthony's side. On third, down and two. A surprising pass, and it's complete. Anthony Carter right at the 40-yard line. Tackle being made by Charles Armstead, but the ball was thrown at the shoe tops of Anthony, and he made a falling catch. Well, Illinois coming with a blitz. Stanley Edwards gets enough of a piece of the linebacker, Squirek, to give Smith time, and then a nice catch by Anthony. They're singling on him on the corner. Anthony makes a deep out cut, 13 yards down, doesn't square it off real well. 
but the defender is not there in time. Smith throws it nicely in the only place it could have been thrown not to be intercepted. Michigan gets the big first. A 12-yard gain, first down, 40-yard line. Again to throw. Carter wide open and hit high. Anthony ran right away from Charles Armstead at the 7-6 ball game. Bo said before this game, he said, I'm going to cut Anthony loose. He's going to return kickoff. He's going to return punt. And I'll tell you what, Anthony Carter in single coverage is what Illinois has given him. Is going to be wide open all day. A deep post cut. He beats the defensive secondary man, Armstead. Armstead is in a junior college transfer. Anthony's got three yards on him, and nobody's going to catch him when he's that wide open. Haji Sheik to convert and a chance to tie the score. It's up. It's good. And with 10.53 left first quarter, we've got one going here at Ann Arbor. It's Michigan 7, Illinois 7. Kirby Wilson is deep to take Haji Sheik's kickoff, and it's a high one. It sails into the end zone. That'll be all. First and 10, Illinois at their own 20-yard line. On both occasions early, Illinois has been covering Anthony Carter one-on-one, -on -one, a deep coach, and Steve Smith puts the ball out there beautifully. Anthony, with such great hands and great speed, is able to make the catch. You know, we talked so much about Anthony, and here's a look at Michigan's scoring drive going 80 yards in just two minutes and one second. But Steve Smith should get some credit for making that good pass. A 60-yard pass play to Anthony Carter. Tony Eason will try to respond. Oh, has he got time? But the hit is made almost instantly. Ben Needham dropping Joe Curtis. One of the things that allows Easton enough time is there's only a three-man rush. That means there's eight men in the defensive secondary coverage, and Needham is back there. His first action in a couple of weeks makes a real big hit. Take a look at the passing offense of Michigan. Not as prolific as Illinois, but very effective. Second down and eight. Curtis has it, and he ducks under Gergay. Short of the first down, about the 29-yard line. Larry, Michigan mixing up their rushing. At uh, that time, they rushed five guys. Uh, the secondary coverage only had six in it. The previous pass, they rushed only three. Trying to shake them up inside to get some kind of pass rush to confuse the offensive line of Illinois. Third down, a yard and a half to go. Curtis has it. He dives over the 30-yard line. Senior Joe Curtis from Chicago, Illinois, gives the Illini first down their own 32-yard line. Team that plays the best defense, you said, Jim. So far, neither team. Well, Michigan got hurt in the first drive by big plays, and three defensive mistakes really hurt him. This drive, it appears they're playing him a little bit more conservatively in the sense that they're not giving up that big play. The defensive backs are deep. On first down, he's in the throw. He's got his man, and it is incomplete. Intended for Oliver Williams, and almost intercepted by Jerry Berge. Burgey. As the ball bounced around under the coverage of Tony Jackson and others, to try the deep post, and as, as I said before, they're throwing it right into the teeth of the coverage. Jackson at free safety is able to come over from center field and, and make the hit. Now, you'll see how deep they're playing here. And you see Williams make the cut into the zone, but Jackson reacts to the ball well. When it is there, he makes the good play defensively to break it up. On second and ten, a short pass is complete for the first down, and he gets away. Miguel de Oliver eluding a couple of tacklers and tacking on some additional yards after he got the first down with a pass. De Oliver only had eight catches coming into the game. Uh, 
Michigan has been susceptible to the tight end pass. And here it's just bad tackling. Both Boren and Burgai overrun the ball. And that Burgai just tripped him up, or Oliver might have been off to the races. 45 yard line of Michigan, first down, Illinois. Better make a couple more sandwiches. It's going to be a long afternoon, it looks like, as both teams have been able to move the ball in the opening minutes. Eason on the reverse for Wilson. And they got a picket line for Wilson. Needham finally makes the tackle on Kirby Wilson, but it's down near the Michigan 15-yard line. Michigan gambling with the blitz. Deergash, number 50, will get to Eason, but just a hair late as he hands it off to Wilson, who's got tremendous speed. And again, Illinois breaks contain with a guy with Wilson's kind of speed. You know, you just you can't catch him when he's got that picket line. He's 9-7 in the 100, and you give him that kind of room, and he's going to make some yardage. 19 yards gained, first down, Michigan, 16-yard line. A quick drop, and Easton has his intended receiver. Gergash wraps up Gerald Smith. But that's about the 11-yard line. Smith had 26 catches for three touchdowns coming into the game. Same kind of pattern that Minnesota used last week to hurt Michigan. The back simply running out of the backfield, getting about two yards deep, deliver it to him, and then let him use his speed to get away. He got five. It's second and five. Smith gets an opening, and he's down to about the five-yard line, and that should be a first down. Daryl Smith, the junior from Los Angeles, catches him and runs with him. Once again, Michigan coming with the blitz. Up front, Illinois doing a good job. Deergash is handled by the guard. Smith cuts it back over the vacated hole that Deergash tried to run through. Gets good yardage on the goal line. First and goal at the five. Not a bad afternoon for Tony Eason. Five out of six. He would have thrown for the touchdown. He could have, but it was so open. He ran in. Michigan will no doubt try to protect that flank, remembering what happened to them last time. But Curtis breaks it outside and in for the touchdown. Good cutback by Joe Curtis. And Illinois goes back on top. It's 13-7. Well, well, you know, we talked about the team we were playing the best team defense. Uh, it's just a great move by Curtis. Bumps it outside. There's Needham. Now, he lets the contain get free. And you've got to contain those people on the line of scrimmage and not let them bounce outside. Twice. It's happened twice. Illinois scored. Part of that crusade, I imagine Mike White, the Illinois coach, has talked to his Juco transfers and told them that Bo Schembechler doesn't think they're very good to have in a program. And these young men are out to prove that they are a helpful addition. Mike Bass sends up the conversion. It's good, and you can make it 14 to 7, Illinois. And from ground level, you can see he bounces it outside, and again, the contain is broken when Needham gets beat, and then really all he's got to do is sneak in with about three yards to go. All he's got to do is dive, and that's what happens in Illinois. Second time they get the ball, come down and score and take a 14-7 lead. Mike Bass with his second kickoff of the afternoon, and it trails this time to Anthony Carter, six-yard line. And look out! and he couldn't quite decide to go inside or back outside again, and Gribble made the tackle on him, but it's way out near the 40-yard line. Anthony returning the kick. It's a good block on the wedge. There's the crease, cuts it up. Now, here's the indecision. Outside or inside, and then he runs into his own blocker and is caught by the backside pursuit. Had he been able to break that crease there, he might have gone the 95 for the TD. Michigan was unable to move the football, so we pick up action later in the quarter. On a draw play, 
up the middle goes Calvin Thomas, and he gets pretty good yardage until Gergas can make the hit. Out about the 28-yard line. Be a gain of six and leave them second down and four. It's the kind of thing that can happen where you're so concerned about the pass, your linemen really tee it up, get ready for the rush, and they can hit you with a quick draw. goes in motion on second down. Little screen pass is complete to Smith, and he's got the first down behind a wall of blockers. Tony Jackson finally makes the tackle, but it's out to the 40-yard line of Illinois. Michigan again coming with a three-man rush. There you see only three rushers. The linemen head outside, and then you get the good blocking, the wall there. And then you get Smith, who's got great speed, good running ability. With that many blockers, he can get some yards. On first down, Ethan decides to run. There isn't much there. Gergash reacting to it, along with Clay Miller, 79. And they knock him down after a gain of about two or three. Once again, there really is very little pressure at all on Easton. He's having all day to throw. And you can see inside that jersey, he's got that flash jacket on. And uh, Mike White doesn't want anything to happen to this guy. He's pretty sturdy, though, at six foot four, 205 pounds, from Walnut Grove, California, Tony Easton. He was close to 2,000 yards passing coming into this game. He's way over 2,000 yards now. It's second down and seven. Got his man Smith again, loose underneath the Michigan linebackers, and Smith is close to a first down near the 50-yard line. Gergash and Bergai tackled him. It is first down, Illinois. Darrell Smith, one of the leading receivers in the Illinois team, and he is a back, and that's one of the reasons Illinois is so successful and why Easton's completion rate is up there is because he does throw the little dump passes. But with a guy with uh, the speed that he has at tailback, he's able to do that and get good yardage. First down, Illinois. Right at midfield. Sideline route is complete to Williams. Great catch. Tony Jackson and Bergai hit him at the 21-yard line, but Oliver Williams hung on. 30 yards on the play for Oliver Williams. They're singling up on the outside. Bergai, top of your screen. He beat the Tony Jackson's over from his three safety spot center field. Just arrived too late. That's great timing by the Illinois pass offense to get it there before Jackson can arrive. Williams had 28 catches coming into the game, five for touchdowns. He's already got a handful of catches, and that one makes Illinois dangerous again on first down. Incomplete. Threw that one a little short intended for tight end Miguel de Oliver. it is the beautiful day it looks like sunny and 48 degrees at kickoff we might nudge up to 50 before it's over but as soon as that sun begins to fall it'll cool off hot enough right here in the stadium with the kind of offense mike white and his illinois team is generating second down and 10 at the michigan 21 yard line Eason drops one off to smith Tackle made immediately by Carlton Rose, but immediately is too late. In this case, they've got good yardage. They flood the zone, and they run a back out of the backfield underneath the linebackers. And Ethan just dumps it to him. He knows he's got eight yards right there, and if, if the running back can do anything, he'll have about two or three more. Down in a yard. What an afternoon that is. Nine out of 11, and you're not out of the first quarter yet. Calvin Thomas tries to put a first down, and he is very close to making it. He got it. Well, 
And Calvin himself signifies, I got it. The Illini faithful that have made the trip from Chastain are having a, a good time of it here this afternoon as Illinois offensively has been super impressive. The problem is that Michigan defensively has not been able to figure them out at all. A first and goal at the nine-yard line. Where they have been here before. A reverse. Kirby Wilson tries to sneak his way around Burgi, and he cannot. But he still got himself a yard gain. But once again, he broke contain at the line of scrimmage, the end of the line of scrimmage. The reverse, he is outside the defensive end. Now he gets to the nine, he starts to make some moves, and Burgi hung in there real well along with Bourne and stopped him for what could have been a little bigger game. Tony Osmond was over there at that time, too, and that is a good sign. Osmond is the one that really has to protect on that side. It is second down and goal at the seven. Open man in the end zone. Touchdown. It's Daryl Smith. Illinois puts its third touchdown on the scoreboard. Daryl Smith, another one of the junior college transfers, an All-American last year as a running back gaining 1,000 yards on the ground. Simple. He just beat Robert Thompson to the corner. Same pattern they threw earlier on a second down and uh, eight, and he got eight of it back. And this time he just goes into the end zone nearly untouched. And Ethan, when he's got a guy that wide open, drills it right between the twos on his uniform. Mike Bass measuring his kickoff point. This guy's going to be tired. <laughs> and he got it. A minute ten left in this first quarter. It's 21-7, Illinois. Take a look, Michigan with the blitz. Boren coming in there, but Robert Thompson, number 99 there, just did not cover the, the receiver. And Smith all alone in the end zone makes the catch. Illinois, three for three in possessions, and they're ahead, 21-7. Mike Bass to kick off again for Illinois. Edwards and Carter at the goal line for Michigan. A line drive, they're trying to avoid Carter, but it gets to Anthony anyway at the eight yard line. However, the Illini are able to get there and their coverage a little better together at the 28 yard line. They stop Anthony. Brady on the tackle. It took a little longer this time to go 77 yards, 10 plays, but the results the same. Amazing Illinois offensive display as they are converting every opportunity they get. down Michigan. Beck slot side to tight end. Edwards and Wolfolk are behind him and it's Edwards straight ahead. Short yardage over the 30 yard line pushed back by the right side of the Illinois defense. would like to see happen is that Michigan holds on to the ball, plays a little ball control football, uh, and, and not give Illinois' offense a chance to, to have the ball. They're three for three on possessions right now for touchdowns, and I'm sure Bo would like to take the while and grind out this touchdown drive. Second down and seven. On the option, they're all over. Steve Smith. Swirick is there, and Don Thorpe, number 96. Steve did not have a chance at all. Swirick coming on the blitz, started at outside linebacker last year. This year, moves inside and has done an outstanding job. There, you see Stanley Edwards didn't have a chance, two guys to block, and Swirick ran through the hole vacated by the pulling guard. Uh, Kurt Becker, and that's the end of the first quarter. Larry in Illinois is looking like winners as they're ahead 21 7. We head for the second quarter. Michigan 
been sorely in need of opening up their offense on third down and 11. And Steve Smith tries to run out and does not. He loses a couple more yards in the scramble. Fourth down and 14, and Don Bracken will have to kick it away as Steve Smith discusses things with Gary Moeller. Well, as we talked at the head of the show, the team playing the best team defense. Right now, Illinois has got it. Puts on the good rush. Steve Smith unable to scramble out with all those people coming after him. Black in second punt of the afternoon. Mike Martin is back at the 34-yard line of Illinois. A little rush by the Illini and a great kick by Bracken. Drives Martin back and he drops it at the 26-yard line and covers up. And he had to cover up because there was a tremendous rush coming down by Michigan 55. And I'm going to have to find that one, Jim. Almost a big break as he drops the ball and then wisely falls on it because if he tries to pick it up, he might have gotten knocked off the ball. Big break for Michigan. But really, field position, Illinois back at their own 26, doesn't mean much in this game. That was Larry Sweeney, 55, down on the coverage, and he really buried Martin just in case they were thinking about a run back. First down, Illinois. and doesn't stop throwing. This time a little swing pass outside. Doesn't get much out of Joe Curtis's reception, however. And the crowd appreciates the fact that Michigan finally stopped an Illinois offensive play. There you see Curtis, 22 receptions this season, averaging 6.5 a reception, but the idea that he gets the ball a lot with running room is the key. Second down at 11. Really about 10 and a half. A little screen pass to the Oliver. Caught from behind. Good coverage by Winfred Carraway. And the crowd, 100,000 strong, getting a little excited. They don't like being behind by 14 points. And we're just starting the second quarter. I don't remember the last time Michigan had three touchdowns scored on them in the first quarter. Big play defensively for Michigan. If they stop once, it'll give them some confidence. Third down and six. And you can see Eason trying to yell instructions to the wingers. They're having trouble hearing. Eason going to run. He got the first down. They gave him too much room and too much time. And Tony Eason took advantage, and it's first down Illinois. You are exactly right on the too much time. Eason at 6'4", 205. He's got good running ability. He's a big, solid kid. But Michigan, again, coming with a three-man rush. Now, there are going to be areas open up. Caraway and Hammerstein get caught up inside. Contain is broken. Eason holds the linebackers with that quick little fake pass and then just gets to the first down and out of bounds. Marion Body helped off the field. Jerry Burgi replaces him in the Michigan defensive backfield. First and 10, Illinois, at their own 37-yard line. And they almost got to Eason on the blitz. But no, it's a complete pass, beautifully thrown to Mike Martin all the way down to the Michigan 25-yard line. Martin had 555 yards of reception last year, a 17.9 average, and he got more this year already. Ethan shows you why he's the quarterback he is. Hit Martin right on the dead stride, also after he knew he was going to be hit. Take a look at the secondary. Tony Jackson, right of your screen, is the man to watch. He's late reacting to the ball. He's got to get over there quicker, and I'll tell you, Ethan is hitting the scene. 38 yards on that play. The Illini knocked it on the door again. First down, Michigan 25-yard line. Good rush on Ethan last time. He was sacked as he delivered the ball. It still worked. He lobs one. Oh, and that could have been a touchdown. Darrell Smith was in between everybody and just didn't hang on. 
Beautifully thrown ball. Absolutely. You know, Easton has thrown every kind of pass we want him to throw today. Here he lobs one up, a little finesse, has it right in his hands, and just drops it. Uh, Smith doesn't usually drop it. He's one of their best receivers. He's a back, but Easton threw that ball exactly where it should have been thrown. He throws the long one under pressure. He zips the short one in the end zone for a touchdown, and he lobs one and should be 14 out of 16. On second down and 10. Little fake draw, screen pass to Smith. Carlton Rose wraps him out of bounds, but I think he's got 10 yards on the play. All depends where they spot the ball. It is first down at the Michigan 14-yard line. Once before, I saw an offense like this. Uh, it was uh, Minnesota came in here. They lost the game, but threw the ball to their backs and the flares and out to the sides all afternoon and frightened Michigan. The only thing I think is comparable to this offense would be somebody like Brigham Young. Easton's going to throw it probably 45, 50 times today. First down, 14-yard line. Pumps once. Throws intercepted. Third guy at the goal line. And out of bounds at the 16-yard line, Jerry Burgai with just what Michigan needed, an interception. Tony Easton makes the only mistake he's made today, an out-and-up cut to his back. He does not see Burgai back there waiting. Now, Burgai comes up right here, makes the nice interception, playing that quarterback, waiting, looking, and then makes a good return. He gets it out of trouble to the 16. Michigan with a big play defensively, and that's got to pick him up that they stopped Illinois, even though Illinois drove. 28 to 7 would not look all that good early in the second quarter, but now Michigan has to put together a drive. And they're going to have to go 84 yards. Stanley Edwards will get some right up the middle. First down. Edwards breaks it out to the 28. Interesting thing, Larry, I think the crowd here has said, you know, that, hey, we're in a real life-or-death battle here, and they're getting in the game. Every play they're going to be yelling on now. Life-or-death battle, they're in trouble. Let's <laughs> face it. Down 21-7. And Illinois is seemingly unstoppable. It's first down Michigan. They've got some room for Smith to throw. He's going to run the option. Wolfolk on the pitch. Good touch by Wolfolk. Over the 50 in Illinois territory. Mike Heaven makes the tackle. Now well, that's the option play, and that is the classic option. Let's will focus you see. Fourth in the nation in rushing, but the key is the pitch. Steve Smith comes down. He has the end blocked. The end cannot get to Bush. Now he's got the room with world-class 9-6 speed in the hundred. This guy at 205 can get some yardage, and that's the way the option's supposed to work as Michigan breaks contain. 25 yards on the play, 46-yard line of Illinois. What a great game this is. If you like offense, you've got all you can want today. Steve Smith gets time to throw for Carter. He got him. And Anthony Cole on his feet. Absolutely amazing. As Armstead tried to throw Anthony down, and Anthony just went with it and gained another four or five yards. The ball is not thrown that well. Credit Wolfolk, a good block to pick up the blitz. Kind of a floater, but Anthony shields the back with his body. Gets up, makes the catch. Now watch this. He throws him like he's going to throw him down, and Anthony gets five. It's almost like he threw him in the end zone. Now here we'll, we'll be able to see Anthony shield him with his body. The ball's underthrown. Watch Anthony slow up, get his back in the way, and then this is just Anthony Carter. Our first down, six-yard line. Wilco cuts back inside, gets it to about the three. Very good tackle put on Wolfolk by Dennis Bishop, 28. And a real good cut by Butch, because there wasn't anything there but white jersey. Anthony is quickly moving up into the yardage, uh, career yardage mark in Michigan. He's got very little to catch Jim Mandich, who was an All-American tight end for Michigan in the late 60s, early 70s. 41 on that pass play that Anthony just caught, and on second down from the goal line, Smith gets it to the one. He wanted to do something else with it, 
But Thorpe got in there, got an arm on him, and hauled him down. It'll be third down at the goal line. We said Michigan had to do something with this drive, and that 41-yard pass play to Anthony Carter has given them a chance. Mike White watching and reading, no doubt, something about Michigan tendencies in near the goal line. Not a time to be reading the newspaper. He can't be comfortable with his lead now. Carter in motion on third down. Steve Smith gets in by fighting right through the tackle of 57, Darryl Bird. Touchdown, Michigan. I'll tell you what, that's, that's a great run by Steve Smith because there wasn't anything there. And from a yard out, he's hit. And Smith gets in running through Bird. 6'3", 220. And Smith at 6'191", just runs through Vangoni and Bird and gets into the end zone. That's just a great effort by that young man. Deep. will attempt the conversion. A chance to get Michigan within seven. And he does just that. Here's the option coming down, and here you see Smith is caught at about the two. There's Bengoni, and there's Bird, and here is just power and determination to get in. That gets Michigan to within seven of Illinois. 21-14, 9-27 left in the first half. Aji Sheik forward to kick off for Michigan, and he sends one into the end zone. Wilson will try to run it out. Kirby Wilson is dropped at the 15-yard line. Burgai is one of the first in to hit him. Bostic is one of the next, and Harris is also there. 84 yards, six plays. Boy, in the paper, that will look like a simple quarterback plunge by Steve Smith, but it was not your average one-yard run. came at a time when the Wolverines needed it. Now Illinois starting 16-yard line. Complete to Murphy and knocked out of bounds 20-yard line. Or Thomas, rather. Cal Thomas. down and five. Michigan changing it up up front a little bit. There are three interior guys now. Hammerstein, Caraway, and Osmond trying to get some kind of a rush going. They try the draw play, and a penalty flag is thrown. Calvin Thomas for short yardage. Mike Bourne, Paul Gergash on the tackle. Let's see what the flag is. The guest would be holding. It is against Illinois and is at the first penalty of the afternoon. The officials probably too busy keeping score here too to throw penalty flags. That might be the only thing that can stop the Illini. Come on, Come on, they drop it back at the 11-yard line where it'll be second down and 15. Inside, Michigan's linebackers severely tested. You saw Gergas take that one step back because he's so worried about the pass, but then meets the block and makes the tackle, and he was also being held. He's got Smith, and he's got a couple of yards. Tripped by Boren, but out over the 20. Good pattern in that Gergash had to cover two people. One was way outside, the other one was right here. Smith gets it, and then Gergash cannot make the tackle as he overruns the ball, and Boren comes in, gets some help from Carpenter and Bostic. But that's kind of pass offense it is. It puts your defense in a pickle. You got seven or eight guys out there as receivers, it seems like. Third down and four. 
22-yard line of Illinois. A little live pass incomplete. Burgai made a dive for it. Didn't quite get there, and we may see an Illinois punt for the first time this afternoon. The key is the coverage on the screen. Michigan figures it's going to be a screen, and it's almost intercepted as Burgai is over there with the intended receiver, and he's just waiting for him, sitting on his hip pocket. And the Michigan people here are beginning to think, hey, maybe we can stop. Anthony Carter back at the Michigan 35-yard line. Chris Sigourney. Back to punt from about his own 10. Pretty good average for Sigourney. And he hits a nice spiral that drives Anthony back, and it gets a great Illinois bounce. Anthony couldn't make the catch, and it is down at the 11-yard line of Michigan. Michigan was unable to move the football, so we pick up action later in the quarter. one left in the half. Illinois gets the chance to go on offense again and they get great field position. And, and knowing Mike White, you don't think he's going to play any conservative kind of football. He's going to be throwing it up. And this is a situation where if Eason throws a mistake, Michigan can turn it into a big play for them going in and out. Joe Curtis shifts back, then goes in motion right to where he started from. Boy, Jim, you called it. Right on. First down pass. Michigan's in the game with only three down linemen. There are four linebackers and four secondary backs. Now, Needham just stands back in the hip pocket and knows that Easton's going over the middle, hides behind the defensive line, steps in front of the ball, and makes the big play. That's the danger you, you live with when you throw it like that, and everybody knows you're going to throw it. You can throw the mistake and let the other team back in the game. Ben Needham got airborne at the 10-yard line, diving over Tony Easton, and he accepts the congratulations of his teammates now on the sideline. Michigan looking for a chance to convert its first and goal at the Illinois 9. Time out to clear some of the paper off the field. Defensively, Illinois giving up more than Michigan, although it looked like Illinois would change those stats around the way their offense is taking care of the Michigan defense in this one. Now it could be a tie score if Michigan can convert this opportunity after the Needham interception. Smith looking, got it! Touchdown! Craig Dunaway! One play, nine yards, and there you go, it's 21-20. Wow, well, a smart play, too, because... Michigan has been hurt with the blitz, so what do they do? They go to a straight rollout pattern to negate the blitz. Dunaway comes free behind the safety. A nice pass by Smith, a nice catch up high. So Michigan's right back in it. Thank you very much. Dennis Let's play Bishop. football. <laughs> Dennis Bishop, the defensive back, doing the only thing he could do, and that's knock Dunaway down and hope the ball comes loose. It did not. Craig Dunaway, the junior from Pittsburgh, makes it a Touchdown and a one-point difference, and Ali Haji Heat can erase that with this conversion. The crowd tells you that he does, and with 3.29 left in the first half, it's Michigan 21, Illinois 21. Haji Sheik will kick off again. And he sends one right out the back of the end zone. No chance for a run back. Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Illinois in possession. That's Greg Bakey, the center, Troy McMillan, and Mike Carrington, the two guards. Dennis Flynn and Bob Stowe, the tackles in this Illinois offensive set, and they are protecting their man, Tony Eason, allowing him to have this kind of afternoon. On second down and 10, wide open, and curling inside Mike Martin as he got 15 more. 
Carlton Rose made the tackle. Jerry Burgey was there, but Mike Martin gets an Illinois first down. Easton gets the time to throw. He's going to complete him. That's as simple as that. That's part of the team defense we talk about. Call up the 25-yard line of Michigan. First down, Illinois. A little unsure about where they should be. The backs are shifting around. But it doesn't matter to Easton. He's got his man. Kirby Wilson and a touchdown saved by Keith Bostic because Wilson made a great little move and almost sprung it for six. Wilson, another junior college transfer from Pasadena Junior College. Brian Carpenter on the coverage, overruns the ball. Wilson able to make the turn up and Bostic over from his safety position. That's the Illini knocking on the door again. Larry, I tell you, this one might be a 52-48 thriller. Well, I wouldn't want to be involved in a close finish for this Illinois team. They just do not need much time to move 60, 70, 80 yards. At the seven-yard line, it is first and goal. Incomplete. Tried to get Smith right in between Reeves and Burgey, and he almost got it there. Well, great reaction by both Reeves and Burgey. He had the seam open, and Easton, we've seen him through all kinds of passes, zip this one in there, but there's the good reaction by both Michigan players. Good play defensively. Looked like Jeff Reeves got a left hand on the ball, I think. That may have been the reason. Second down and goal. Gets it to the five, and that's all. Looked like he intended to run that one all the time, but Michigan was not fooled. Well, the Wolverines came with a blitz. He read it and figured there'd be some room in the middle. You see Needham, Thompson, Giergang, Miller, all of them in there, knowing that uh, you got to get this guy down, man. If you give him a chance to throw, something's going to happen but they certainly have the field goal opportunity if this down should not get them to five yards for the touchdown. Come on, team. Curtis goes in motion. Eason rolls out. Robs it out the back of the end zone when everybody was covered. And it is fourth down and goal at the five. And looks like Illinois will go for three. You know, Larry, the, we saw something there happen. Ben Needham refused to let Easton get outside. He did not break contain where he had done that earlier in the half. And because of that, he was forced to throw it out of bounds and not pick up yardage to the touchdown. So Mike Bass is called upon to try a field goal, and this one will be a rather easy attempt from the 12-yard line, 22 yards in all. No good. And Michigan escapes with a break as Bass misses a 22-yard field goal attempt. A minute two left in the half of a 21-21 tie. Not only that, but it's got to give the defense a tremendous lift going in at halftime, knowing, hey, we gave up the yards, but when they got close, we got tough and stopped them, which they haven't been able to do a lot of today. I guess would be a conservative Michigan offense. <laughs> Michigan's chance, and I would guess a conservative play here in the final minute, two seconds so that they do not give Illinois a chance to pack more points up. Although maybe they'll gamble on 80 yards themselves. Which will, folks, 
flips a couple of tacklers and gets it out to the 35 yard line. Quick little 16 yard gain for Butch Wolfolk. Took only seven seconds. On the delay draw, they get some uh, good blocking up front. The rest is up to Butch as Michigan goes back to the hurry up offense. No huddle for the Wolverines. Steve Smith looking to run out of the pass formation, and he does. Across midfield and down to the Illinois 42 yard line. Steve Smith, first down, Michigan. And that didn't take very long. 41 seconds left on the clock. Michigan's got two timeouts left, so they're in pretty good shape at this point. Automatic timeout to set the chain. There goes the clock. There goes the Wolverine. Incomplete pass intended for Blackington and thrown a little bit short. I think a smart move in the sense that Steve Smith goes away from Anthony Carter where they've been going all day. You don't want to mess up the chance of getting a field goal and going in at halftime with a lead after being down by 14 points early in the in the second quarter and uh, I think uh, it's wise to go to the tight end or possibly look for Vincent Bean or Fred Brockington somebody other than Carter who might be just single covered. Steve Smith got a handful of plays no doubt from the sideline comes back in and looks at 33 seconds on the clock. Second down 42 yard line of Illinois. Long throw for Anthony. Out of bounds incomplete about the 12-yard line that play used up six seconds but now it's third down and still 10 yards to go they're giving Anthony the outside Smith throws this pass well yeah it was incomplete out of bounds but he threw it over the outside shoulder no way that pass could have been intercepted if Anthony does make the catch and it's a little better thrown inside you know, then you got a good first down. But that's the way to throw those long ones deep down the sideline, over the outside shoulder. Carter is split out to the right. Vince Bean, blank left on third and ten. A running play again is wide open. Steve Smith will go the distance. two yards right straight up the middle as the receivers went outside and so did Illinois defenders. You know, you talked about Illinois coaching and scouting as well as they did against Michigan. How about Michigan? Knowing that Illinois safeties are both going to the outside looking for Bean and Carter, when Steve Smith turns it upfield, there is nobody within 25 yards of him. He goes the distance. Great play by Michigan. Good run by Steve Smith. So much for my conservative play in the final minute and 20 seconds. I'll take that back. As Michigan goes 80 yards to score. And Haji Sheik gets an extra point added on and with 19 seconds left in the half it's michigan 28 illinois 21. oh you, you know larry this is such a good call because everybody is out to the sidelines smith's got that good four six speed we've said faster than anthony carter in the first 20 yards of a 40 yard dash and you give him that much room with that much area hey this kid's gone Sheik's fifth kickoff of the first half is a little line drive that will run some of the clock down but give Illinois good field position Kirby Wilson is tackled at about the 25 yard line tackle made by John Lott and there it is only five plays to go 80 yards of course that helps when half of the distance is the 42 yard touchdown run by smith his ninth touchdown rushing his second today he has thrown 12 touchdown passes even with 15 seconds left don't count illinois out i just don't believe these guys are this good offensively they'll do anything that's complete to curtis they got 10 yards jurgash and rose make the tackle 
on Joe Curtis. They'll stop the clock at nine seconds until they set the chain again, and Illinois calls timeout. Mike White wants to think it over. One out of 28, that's a good afternoon, and he's only halfway through. He's in on first down, wants it all. And it is intercepted at the Michigan 20-yard line. Gary Burgeye, second interception of the half, and another favor for Michigan. Uh, it's almost as good as a punt. They go down a straight fly pattern with number 17, Oliver Williams. And Ethan just throws it up there for grabs. Burgeye playing a deep center field. Just has a beat on the ball and goes for it. Gives Michigan two seconds left. For the 28-21 lead, you wonder, is Bo going to let Anthony go deep and throw it up to him and try to get 35 in the first half? Why not? <laughs> I'm all through guessing conservative. Two seconds to play. The ball is at the 17-yard line for Michigan. Smith gets time. He lets one go for Vincent Bean. He got him. That'll be all as Bean fell down inside the 40-yard line at the 36 of Illinois. Not quite enough, but what a gamble. And what a first half. Michigan 28, Illinois 21. Most entertaining first half. There's never been one like it in an Illinois-Michigan game. That many points put up on the board. Really the big plays that saved Michigan after Illinois jumped out to that early lead. Uh, Illinois led 7 to nothing, and Michigan came right back. Steve Smith with the Anthony Carter single coverage, deep post pass. Anthony makes a fine catch, goes 60 yards for the touchdown, becomes a career leader, breaking his own record, and at that point it's tied up at 7. But Illinois then really roared back. They scored two, made it 21-7, and the first quarter wasn't over. Little Daryl Smith getting open in the end zone for this Tony Eason pass. 21-7, Illinois. But amazingly, Michigan had something to come back with. Well, they got two interceptions which helped. One set up a touchdown. Uh, another one got him out of the end zone, really, as Illinois was threatening. And then with less than a minute left, Steve Smith on the quarterback draw goes 42 yards, and at the end of the half, Michigan all of a sudden had a 28-21 lead, as Smith goes his longest route, 42 yards from a run from scrimmage, and we're about ready to start the second half, as we see nothing but offense, 20 first downs for the Illini, and the first half stats, and we expect the second half to be similar. A 21 of 31 half for Tony Eason. Just amazing. Mike Bass sends a kickoff deep. And it's Anthony Carter about four yards into the end zone. Starts out. Stumbles. Going to have to turn on the speed, but he's got it. 25-yard line and out of bounds. Michigan first and 10. Good run back by Anthony Carter. On the next series of downs, Michigan was forced to punt. So we move ahead to action later in the quarter. 22-yard line, first down. They try a running play, finally. Curtis gets a little bit. Mike Boehm pushes him back. They had 16 running plays in the first half. You know, we talk about Michigan's rush. You know, it's poor, but against the run, they're very tough. Uh, you can see it's Boren, Deergash, uh, Caraway. They're really sticking in there tough against the run, but it's the pass rush that has hurt them. They've got to develop some kind of pressure on Ethan. Second down and seven. Ethan's got his man, the Oliver. And the tight end is up over the 40-yard line before Jackson and Bostwick knock him down. Miguel the Oliver. Once again, Ethan, a lot of time to throw. Waits for his tight end to come clear underneath. Just a little dump pattern. He beats Geargash, who is one-on-one -on -one with him. And 
Herman gets blocked, and then it's the safety, Jackson and Bostic, that have to make that. When you get a receiver that deep into your secondary that your safeties are making tackles, they're open. It's also first down, 44-yard line of Illinois. Underthrown that time intended for Daryl Smith, and he couldn't hang on incomplete. Those short passes are part of the reason for easy statistics being so good, but we have seen he can throw the long one, too. Michigan defensively running linebackers are getting isolated on backs one-on-one, -on -one. and whenever you're in that kind of situation, the defense is at a disadvantage because your backs are running at 4-6, 4-5 speed. Linebackers aren't that quick. Second down and ten. Mike Murphy, the fullback, changes position. As does Daryl Smith. And that one thrown right into the ground under the rush of Hammerstein. He's in too poorly for perhaps the first time this afternoon. He meant to lob one out in the flat, and he just couldn't let go of the ball soon enough. The reason is the rush. You see Hammerstein right there in his face, forcing Eason to throw it earlier. Uh, Michigan again, trying something defensively up front, running a game. Hammerstein, the middle guard, looped all the way around outside the tackle. As Michigan's offense gets a word with Gary Moeller as Tony Eason goes back to work. On third down and ten, the Illinois drive stalling. Maybe. And it does. Incomplete pass thrown poorly again behind the intended receiver, Mike Murphy. It's fourth and ten. Illinois punter, Chris Sigourney, out for the second time this afternoon. Only the second time, although the last time we saw him, it was a 63-yard punt that Anthony Carter lost in the sky, and the bounce enabled it to go deep into Michigan territory. And Anthony is back now at the 15-yard line. Sigourney will kick from about his own 33. End over end. Anthony's got it, 17-yard line. And he breaks the seam. Anthony Carter heading outside. One man to beat it, Sigourney. And he got him. Sigourney pushed him out of bounds at the 24-yard line of Illinois. Bo Schembechler said he was going to turn Anthony Carter loose. And uh, Anthony's limping a little bit as he comes back. But uh, he didn't limp at all on the return. And the key was the first wave. He gets a good seam. And once he gets through that hole right there, he's got two men to beat. One of them is Sigourney, who's got an unbelievable angle on him. And Sigourney really does all he can do is Anthony just barely misses getting around the corner and knocks him out of bounds. A 59-yard return for Anthony Carter. And Michigan knocking on the door. Stanley Edwards straight up the middle and inside the 15-yard line. Hanging on, 57, Daryl Bird. Larry, once again, if Stanley would have cracked that, there wasn't anybody deep in their secondary. Illinois is bringing their safety right up on the football, much like Illinois or Minnesota did last week. And if, like Steve Smith in the first half, if they can break a seam in the middle with those safeties up on the ball, there's nobody back there. Nine yards for Edwards. It's second down and one. And Stanley jams into the middle again and gets the first down. Big plays making the difference. Long touchdown pass to Anthony Carter as he goes back into the huddle and gets the cheers of the crowd because his 59-yard punt return has given Michigan this kind of field position. A first down at the Illinois 12-yard line. Make it 13-yard line. Steve Smith floats one for Norm Betts, incomplete. Steve did a good job getting out of the way of the rush. Had to force it early to, to Betts and really overthrew him. The problem is, they come with a rush. It's picked up right there by Wolfolk, but Steve's getting more pressure from the outside, has to throw it early, 
If he'd had a little more time, Beth might have come open deeper in the corner. Second down and 10, Anthony Carter splits out to the right. It's Wolfolk and Edwards in the eye behind Steve Smith. A lob for Anthony. Got it. Touchdown, Michigan. number 28 in his career for Michigan for Anthony Carter one on one they come with a blitz Smith throws it up beautifully you just can't cover Anthony one on one like that and Armstead's getting an education here this afternoon he's a junior college transfer and Anthony a junior out of Riviera Beach Florida is just teaching him that uh, you call football nothing pal you're talking the big time now maybe the best there is 24-21, Haji Keith sends it up and makes it good with 9.25 left to play third quarter. It's Michigan 35, Illinois 21. Haji Keith forward to kick off. Kirby Wilson at the goal line for Illinois. He cannot get to it until it gets to the back of the end zone. Anthony Carter puts Michigan ahead 35-21. The blitz is coming with the safety. There's single coverage, one-on-one -on -one in the corner. Anthony right now has the set. Smith throws it beautifully up in the air. That's his 28th career touchdown. That's the Michigan record. And the Wolverines on Anthony's punt return of 59 yards that put him in position go 24 yards in just four plays using a minute on the clock with Anthony getting it on the other end scoring the TD. Illinois back in possession 20 yard line first down. Daryl Smith goes in motion. And even gets a complete one to the Oliver who is pushed out of bounds 35 yard line. Robert Thompson gambling on the interception, didn't get it, and Bostic had to make the tackle on Miguel de Oliver. De Oliver looks hurt right now, but he, he made a good catch. It'll be coming right at you. Robert Thompson really does a good job as coverage. Just two weeks ago, Thompson had surgery on his hand. And you see, Dove just got there a little bit late. De Oliver is at that size, he's about 6'4", 210, runs a 4'6", 40. And Thompson might be the only linebacker on Michigan's team to stay with him. A first down on the 15-yard game. And that should have been complete at the 40-yard line, but it was not. Dropped instead by Oliver Williams. Second and 10, Illinois. Does it look to you at all like Ethan in the second half is a little bit tentative throwing the ball? A little bit more so than he was in the first half? Two interceptions may have worried him a little bit, and he made he looked a little more careful about where he's throwing. Instead of just winding up and ripping it in there, he's kind of aiming it, kind of like a pitcher trying to aim the ball. A day for revising record books, and these two teams are doing it this afternoon. 56 points so far, and we've got nine left in the third quarter. That completion works out to the 40-yard line. Mike Boren makes the tackle. McAvoy makes the reception. Coming over the middle to the tight end, a little drag pattern. They clear out the zone, and the tight end just kind of sits there, waits for the ball. Ethan delivers it. That's the kind of pass that they've gotten. Bourne takes a late hit from his own teammate, Giergas. He's shaking up. Third down and four, Illinois at their own 41-yard line. Easy pass incomplete. Mike Martin tried to shoestring it for a yard gain or so. It does not work. It's fourth down, and Sigourney will have to punt the Michigan defense beginning to shut down Illinois. Well, Illinois has run just about every pass pattern I think they could run in the first half and here in the opening of the second half. And Michigan's defensive linebackers are beginning to get a feel for what they're trying to do and what patterns they're getting into. And they're able to read them before they develop. 
Now if you're Sigourney, how do you kick it away from Anthony Carter? Well, you can try to kick it over his head, and you almost did at the five-yard line. But Anthony manages to get five-yard return out of it, just diving ahead to the 10. 50 yards on the punt, and a beauty by Sigourney. And Carter really got spun around down there trying to find the football. down Michigan not great field position inside their own 10 yard line actually and they try Lawrence Ricks and get a little opening and Ricks manages to land at about the 18 a gain of eight for Lawrence Ricks this has worked rather effectively with Stanley Edwards and with Butch Wolfolk, and the blocking pushes the Illini back and spreads them apart, and Ricks is able to get the good gain on first down. Second down and a little more than a yard. What an afternoon. Thought he had a great one against Minnesota. Anthony Carter's having a better afternoon. Lawrence Ricks turns it up inside, first down Michigan. Tackle is made by Mike Heaven, the freshman from Delray Beach, Florida but too late to stop Rick from getting the first down. It's at the 23-yard line. Michigan moving it out from about its own nine and a half. Ken Beckler looks on. Smith goes with the option, runs right behind Edwards and up to the 30-yard line. Smith, the ball carrier for a gain of six and a half. Now, this is kind of offense ball really wants to run and be successful in the second half. He's got a 14-point lead, but hold on to the football, eat up a lot of the time, don't let Easton and Illinois have a chance on offense because they have really been successful. Although Michigan really, Larry, if you look at it, has shut them down from no points from the first quarter on. Second down, Stanley Edwards tries to find some room and gets only a yard or so. It'll be third down and two. Illinois defensively is gambling with most people up and then they drop back their defensive secondary at the snap of the ball. But there are times when the Illinois defense will have 11 men on the line of scrimmage. That's what happened when Steve Smith caught him and ran that 42-yard touchdown at the end of the first half. To keep this drive moving, the Wolverines need two. Third down. Option. Smith has got it. He lost the football, but Norm Betts has got it at the Illinois 45-yard line. If you're going to fumble, fumble in the direction of the blocker in front of you. Good heads-up play from Norm Betts, and, and, and part of the reason that tight ends go down the field is because they have, one, to get the fumble, and two, to get downfield blocked. There you see Illinois defensively. They're all caught up inside, and you see if Steve Smith gets by one, then he's the only one left. But he fumbles, and Betts there going for a downfield block. Johnny on the spot. That's not a mistake. That's not a stroke of luck. He was in the position he was supposed to be in. 24 yards on the play, first down Michigan at the Illinois 44. Quick rush, and Smith tried the quick pass to Stanley Edwards, who was well covered. John Benagoni, the linebacker, over covering Edwards, and a little bit of a blitz on Steve Smith. Makes it second down and 10, Michigan. Actually, a lot of a blitz. <laughs> That's where they were lined up with 11 men on the line of scrimmage. Five and a half minutes to play. Third quarter, it's 35-21, Michigan. <laughs> Illinois with a 21-point first quarter blitz. And they really threatened a couple of times in the second quarter, but Jerry Burgeye 
intercepted once at the goal line to save, and they missed the field goal on another opportunity. Again the blitz, but Smith gets this one complete to Edwards. And he's out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Charles Armstead ran him out of bounds, or rather, Edwards' own momentum carried him out of bounds. Same play to this side. They ran it a play earlier. This is the way to beat the blitz. You run a back out, isolated on a linebacker. Steve Smith, under pressure, just delivers it out right at the camera. Stanley Edwards with a good over-the-shoulder reception. And then he just gets it upfield and starts rolling. Good play on a blitz to make Illinois aware, hey, don't do it too often, we can burn you. You got a good idea of what happens to the quarterback, though. Steve Smith had no idea what happened after he let go of that one. Buried as the ball was on its way to Edwards. First and ten, inside the 30 of Illinois. Lawrence Rick gets a handoff and gets nine yards down to the 20. From the 29 to the 20, a good cut back by Lawrence Rick. Yeah, and, and there really wasn't much there. Illinois defensively up front really got a lot of penetration. Take a look at the offensive line. There is penetration as Bubba Ferris misses his block. Stanley Edwards picks him up. Then Rick makes the good cut outside as they were angling down. Good play by Rick. He's the one that made the yardage. Again, it's Lawrence Rick. He's got the first down, diving near the 15. Lawrence Rick doing that straight upfield running that Jim Becker liked so much. And when it's combined with the kind of blocking that the Michigan offensive line is giving, Rick, you get the time-consuming drive. Four and a half minutes to play in this quarter, and Michigan has marched from its own 10-yard line down inside the 15 of Illinois. Problems for Mike White. First and 10 on the option. Steve Smith. He's got an angle. He's got a touchdown. I'll tell you what. Stanley Edwards has been carrying the ball and, and we don't talk a lot about him as a blocker but he is the guy that gets the original fix he runs through the line of scrimmage staying out in front of smith and then he makes a great block on the safety right there to get him into the end zone that is uh, a block on mike heaven and uh, steve smith ran it in but give credit to that offensive line and a nice block from stanley edwards he keeps trying for Michigan's 42nd point of the afternoon. He got it. 42-21. Ground level. You'll see Edwards. He takes the fake, runs right ahead of Smith. Now watch. He doesn't throw. He gathers. Now he sees Heaven. Just shoves him out of the way, and that's what clears it for Smith into the end zone. Good play. Well blocked. Michigan out in front, 42-21. Hodgie Sheik for the seventh time this afternoon sends Kirby Wilson to the middle of the end zone. And he'll not run it out. First and 10, Illinois at the 20-yard line. Illinois was unable to move the football, so let's pick up action later in the quarter. 34 yards on the punt. It's the 42-yard line of Michigan. First down. That's in motion. Edwards, the ball carrier, diving ahead to the 45. And that's about all. But that three, second down and seven. Again, look for a time-consuming drive. Keep it on the ground. Take a little more time between plays. You don't have to hurry up to that line of scrimmage. There's a three-touchdown lead. I'm sure Bo's not going to get too fancy, and he'll only throw if he has to or he sees something really wide open. Keep the ball out of the hands of Tony Eason. A little reverse action, Anthony Carter. Gets a block from Paris on the far side and crosses midfield, first down Michigan. Bubba Paris came back and threw that block that sent Anthony around the corner. Also a good block by Kurt Becker, 65, the right guard. 
pulls out, then comes back, runs right into the defensive end and knocks him down. And that defensive end been on his feet. He might have been able to push Anthony out wider and you'd have had a little bit better kind of a situation defensively. Here it is again, 65, turns around, runs right into him. The blocking up front, you see Illinois all coming this way. Anthony goes the other. First down, 46-yard line. Penalty flag is thrown. Anthony Carter jumped offside, so you can erase the completion to Bush Wolfo. That'll be against Michigan. Anthony slaps the thigh pad. Didn't mean to do that, but he jumped too soon. Bush Wolfo coming back a little tender, either an ankle or a knee, and that's not good to see. Bush is, of course, Michigan's all-time leading rusher. Over a thousand yards this season. The penalty stepped off back to the 49-yard line of Michigan. will make it first down and 15. Bush comes out. Lawrence Rich goes in at tailback. Well played game from that respect, just the two penalties. A holding call against Illinois and this illegal motion call on Michigan. And we're almost at the end of three quarters of play. Smith throwing, got Anthony. 38-yard line. That's short of a first down, but it makes up most of the yardage. It'll be second down and about three. A deep out pattern. They're very concerned about Anthony getting deep. They come with a blitz, single coverage. Smith delivers the ball again beautifully on the outside. Thrown down and away so nobody can intercept it. The only guy that can catch it is Anthony Carter. He did, and Michigan gets it back. They're just now looking at a short down with a short second down play. Smith is 10 out of 16 on the afternoon. Dunaway in motion. Stanley Edwards trying to get the first down. He does not. Get maybe a yard. Illinois reading that one very well. Bishop, Gregus are both there. Third and one. By the time they snap the ball for the next play, there will be less than a minute to play in the third quarter. Lawrence Rick straight ahead. And he is at the 35-yard line. That should be first down. Spurrick makes the tackle for Illinois. Up front, Michigan just blowing people off the ball. All they need is a yard. Rick going right at it, holding both hands on the football. Short yardage play. Lawrence Rick getting some action because of a tender ankle, it appears, from Butch Wolfolk doing a job. The Wolverine 35 yards away from the Illinois goal line. First and ten. jump that time. Pitches back to Ricks and the whistles blow and there is no play. Ferrari and Grigas were both there in on Smith but the pitch was away and that's too bad. Could have been a very big breaking play. They called the offsides against Michigan too and, and I don't know why the ball likes that too much because it looks as though Illinois jumped. Steve Smith is smiling. Something you can afford to do when you lead by 21 points. And the call is against Michigan. Apparently, they saw some motion that drew Illinois. Two wide receivers in, Carter and Bean, and you wonder, maybe Vincent Bean might get a shot at it here. They know that they're looking for Anthony. First and 15. That's the kind of afternoon Steve Smith has had, plus a 42-yard touchdown run and a one-yard touchdown run. On the option. Smith cuts inside, cuts back, runs away from the man and gets the first down. Smith got the 15 and more. Armstead finally stopped him after a 19-yard gain. What's well, the kind of gamble you take? Minnesota, or rather Illinois, with 11 men up on the line of scrimmage, good blocking at the point of attack, 
when Smith gets beyond the line of scrimmage, he's got nobody there. When he runs through Butkus's tackle, it's up to the safety men to get him. And that's Armstead. And that's the end of the third quarter with Michigan looking very good now after having a scare early as they lead it 42 to 21. Steve Smith having a good rushing afternoon. Got 19 on that one. First down. 21 yard line of Illinois. in the fourth quarter with the option again. The pitch goes to Ricks, and he's run out of bounds inside the 15 at the Illinois 14-yard line. Willie Young wrapping up Lawrence Ricks. Good option play. Smith down the line of scrimmage. The end comes up to take him. The good pitch to Ricks, and now he's outside on the corner. Has a defensive tackle to beat. He's able to turn the corner for good yardage. Second down and three. Quick points up on the board, and that got Michigan going. From that point on, it's been Michigan's game. They're a little slow in this huddle, too. And the bench hurries them out so they don't get another delay of game penalty, which they got the last time. Lars Ricks up the middle. And he dives through to about the two-yard line. A little frustrated that he didn't split it and go the distance. Somebody got a hand on him, and Ricks went down. Got the first down, but it's short of the touchdown by a yard and a half. Good blocking at the point of attack. When Ricks gets the ball, Stanley Edwards, the blocking back, comes through free. Stanley was probably more surprised than anybody. Watch it. Give it to him again. Stanley is free and clear. He jumps over and misses the block on the back, but Ricks gets through there. No problem at all. Michigan knocking on the door. First and goal at the one-yard line. Pinch Bean is the man in motion. They run the other way, and Rick plays it right in. No doubt about it. Touchdown, Lawrence Rick. Michigan up the lead to 48-21. Once again, blocking at the point of attack. Edwards kicks the end out. Ricks with one yard to go and ahead of steam is going to run right through and he did. Just well executed play blocking at the point of attack and on the goal line that's exactly what you need and Michigan got it. IGC has been perfect this afternoon. Try again, and he converts for the seventh time. Ground level. Stanley Edwards kicks the end out, and there's the hole. And Rick just plows through, runs through two arm tackles, and really it's no contest as Jack Squirit couldn't hold on to Larry Ricks in Michigan. The roars out in front, 49-21. We've got 14-23 left in the fourth quarter. Wilson again in the end zone to receive the kickoff by Keith. And no run back. Illinois first and 10 at their 20. Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Illinois in possession. Illinois at the 35-yard line. Eason runs out of it away from the blitz by Thompson, but he doesn't want to run. And his throw is intercepted. Tony Jackson on the run back for Michigan. Gets it down to the 29-yard line of Illinois, Tony Jackson. Tony Eason probably should have run this ball. He had broken contain to get outside. There was plenty of room. Tony Osmond wasn't even near him. You see he steps up in the pocket. He's got room. He's on the run. He should have probably run. Instead, sets up, throws it deep over the receiver, and Tony Jackson playing deep center field free safety. It was really thrown right at him. He reacted to the ball. Michigan gets the big break. Now they're back in business on their own 28-yard line. Well, 
as a chance for more, as you can see, with lots of time left in this fourth quarter and great field position. In Illinois territory, Dunaway on the move. Wolfolk outside. Around the block by Edwards, and he gets to the 25-yard line. That's all. Armstead making the tackle on Wolfolk. Thought we might see some new players. B.J. Dickey taking over. At quarterback for Steve Smith, who has done about all you can do in an afternoon. Vince Bean comes in with a play from the sideline. Brockington goes out. Second down. And seven. Stanley Edwards, and he gets it over the 25 to about the Illinois 23-yard line, where it'll be third down and five. they go for a field goal with this circumstance so they have two chances to get the first down here and keep this drive rolling. Dickey throws and it's incomplete but a penalty flag is down. Armstead simply made the tackle too soon on Vince Bean. That'll be Michigan's ball at the point of the foul. Same pass pattern that earlier Steve Smith had hit Anthony Carter on. Just a straight post pattern. Vincent Bean goes down the field, turns it up inside, shields the defender with his body, but here Armstead gets him early, and you'll see. There he's contact about five yards before the ball gets there. Armstead had Bean's arms tied behind him. First and goal at the seven-yard line. A break keeps that drive alive for Michigan. Edwards and Wolfolk behind Dickey. It's Edwards up the middle. He slugs off a tackler. Touchdown, Michigan. You don't want to tackle uh, Stanley Edwards up around the shoulders because he'll just run right through you. This is exactly what happened. Fairly good blocking at the point of attack. And, and Stanley just runs right through the tackle when it hits him up on the shoulders. He is just too big and too strong in his upper body strength to tackle him from up there. I.G. Keith trying for 56 on the scoreboard. He got it. Ground level, Stanley Edwards. Here's the play running right through Willie Moore's grasp into the end zone touchdown, and Michigan really rolling away with it now. As I'm sure Mike White in Illinois says, we really let this one get away. Michigan leading with 11 minutes and eight seconds left in the fourth quarter, 56 to 21. Busy afternoon for Haji Keith, and he kicks off again. This one dropping right on the goal line to Kirby Wilson, who can only get 15 yards back as Bostic has him wrapped up. Illinois was unable to move the football, so let's pick up action later in the quarter. And the blitz for Illinois. Dickey runs out of it and incomplete. A little overthrown intended for Washington. Fourth down and seven. Illinois sending the blitz under this circumstance, trying to pressure Dickey. See if they can get some good field position, but I'm not exactly sure why. Came right up through the middle and forced Dickey out of the pocket, and BJ just on the run overthrew. The intended receiver, that's a tough pass to throw, especially when you're on the run, going to the sideline with a lot of pressure behind you. Back into punch to Kirby Wilson, the lone setback for Illinois. 
penalty flag is thrown down as Wilson is knocked out of bounds. Maybe, maybe that's not a penalty flag, although it appears to be. Two of them down. Well, one penalty flag ladder was thrown way back behind the receiver on about the 10 yard line, and that was right at the kick. And you wonder what went on back there. Kirby was the only one there. And nobody was near him. I don't know what he could have done wrong, but apparently he did something wrong. Discussing it with Hassel of Michigan, a 40-yard kick that would be spotted at the 17-yard line, but they're bringing it back. And Michigan will get a first down out of it at the 43 of Illinois. men on the field, an illegal substitution, credit the mistake to coach Mike White, somebody on the sideline. Did the wrong thing, somebody didn't report coming in or something like that. Well, I figured maybe they needed 12. <laughs> and it's first down, Michigan, 43-yard line of Illinois. Under eight minutes to play. Hassel fights his way down to the 40-yard line. Neal and Garrity are in there on the offensive line now for Michigan. A lot of this changes in the squad. Valortis is the center. 59. Some of these aren't even on my spotting chart. Rich Stringer at a tackle. We have seen Stringer playing before. Hassel and Rogers lined up behind Dickey. Rick Rogers runs into a pile and gets it just back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and eight. Hundred and five thousand here in Ann Arbor, and at least half of them are sitting in the sunshine and probably pretty comfortable. The other half in the shadows here have got to be cool. Temperature probably in mid-40s now. On third down and eight. Dickey runs the option. Good cut inside and that's close to a first down. I think he's got it. most unusual things you'll see is, is uh, Michigan running a, an option here close and Illinois really not defensing it, expecting the run, but they're coming with blitzes and things looking to stop some kind of a pass or get some things done. And um, that's really not the kind of situation you want right now. You want to lay back and stop the run because you know Michigan's not going to want to throw the ball, so they're going to keep it on the ground even in, you know, third long situations because you're down inside their territory and you're just looking to use up the clock. Another first down for Michigan. 32-yard line of Illinois. Another option play, and Rick Rogers has some running room. Out of bounds, inside the 15 at the 12-yard line goes Rick Rogers, and that's another first down. They had it caved in right at the line of scrimmage and perimeter was broken. The pitch uh, immediately because the end came in. Dickey makes a good decision and everybody was inside expecting something from the fullback. They get outside with the option. Now, take a look at the linebacker here, Larry. This is a middle linebacker in a three-point stance. Now, that's one of the unusual things you'll see Illinois do because that doesn't allow them that great mobility left and right. You'd think that he'd want to stand up on two feet, read the play, and go to the flow. Most of Illinois' first downs, however, came in that first quarter when they blitzed Michigan. Hassel goes inside the 10-yard line. After the 20, 21-yard gain by Rick Rogers, Michigan is now at the Illinois 9. He also got tripped by uh, Tom Garrity. He tried to move through. Garrity really didn't make the block, but tangled up the legs. Well, that's... 
part of the problem, I, I think, lining up in that three-point stance from a little middle linebacker position. You want to stay low, yeah, but you also want to have your head up, your ability to see the ball and where it's going. When you're in a three-point stance, you've got to stand up first rather than be on the move at the snap. Second down and seven. Rick Rogers has an opening and gets it to the three. Burick makes the stop on Rogers. Two. I want that touchdown, Rick Rogers. Could see it. Could see goal line. He didn't get the three. They moved the ball back to the four. Well, there's your, your Butch Wolf folk uh, of the future, maybe. Uh, he's a very, very good back. I don't know whether he'll amass the yardage that Butch Wolfolk did, but he certainly is very, very high on Bo Schembechler versus running back. 6'2", 200 pounds. It's third down and two at the four. Rogers got the touchdown. Got all four, and Rick Rogers will be an excited young man. Nothing real fancy, Larry, just power football. The point of attack, blocking, and then Rogers takes it over himself, jumps over, keeps his feet going, just sneaks it in, breaks the plane for the touchdown, and Michigan is in the 60s. Looking for 63 on the conversion by Haji Keith. like practice he got it from field level Hassel with the block there nice block from the fullback Rogers jumps over the top and gets in just barely as Michigan has roared out to a 63 21 lead over the fighting Illini Out the back of the end zone, no return. First down at the Illinois 20 yard line. Daryl Smith goes in motion. Eason still throwing and incomplete. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Mike Martin. Good defense by Michigan. A five and a half minute scoring drive. That's about the longest one of the day, I think. 12 plays. Rick Rogers going in from seven yards out. And a key, too, Michigan's second team for the most part, the offensive line, the tight ends, the quarterback, and backfield, all getting that yardage. And that's great experience for them as you head down the stretch. Second down and 10. Eason got his man, but it was not loose. Jeff Reed timed his hit perfectly, and he separated Mike Martin from the ball. Now Reeves is going for the ball. He's playing in there at the free safety position, center field. Uh, he sees the ball delivered right down the middle. They're playing a deep center field. When he sees the ball delivered, he reacts to it. He's going for the ball, and at the time, meets Martin, and Martin got the worst of it. and 10 for Eason and Illinois from their own 20-yard line. Carlton Rhodes gets inside, forces Eason out of the pocket, and they got him. Carlton Rhodes and Doug Gaines combine to knock Eason down inside the 10. Kind of pressure that you'd like to see Michigan get earlier. Rose out here inside route but look at him fight to get outside Ethan breaks contained but James helps him out by coming up from the middle not allowing him to run so Doug James makes just as good a play out there as Ethan is sitting on the seat of his pants saying where did we all go wrong Sigourney to kick it away and Michigan has a couple of receivers deep this time Evan Cooper and Tony Jackson. Jackson signaling fair catch, cannot get it. Just gets away, and the ball takes a great bounce and is down at about the 41 yard line of Michigan. A day for the record book. 
Anthony Carter with 309 yards total. Returns, receptions. Steve Smith, 340 yards total. A second best game in Michigan history. And of course, the point total, the most that Michigan has ever scored against Illinois. This one for the statistician. 341 left to play. First down, 40-yard line. Dickey pitches to Rogers. Great block by Hassel, and Rogers runs it up over the 50 for a first down. Hassel's block was really the key that made the run easy for Rick Rogers. Absolutely. Turns it up inside. There is Hassel knocking off heaven, or rather Larry Mosley, and. Uh, well, I tell you, when you're a running back like that and you see that fullback knock the guy down, you say, thank you very much, and head on downfield. First down, Illinois 49-yard line. Again, it's Rogers. Nowhere to go that time. Don Thorpe got through without being blocked, or at least without being blocked very well, and he had an arm on Rick Rogers before anything could get started. Loss of a couple, second down and 12. You can see some of the stadium now as the seats are emptying. I figure this one's under control. 63-21. Rick Rogers having himself a pretty good day also as Michigan's tailbacks are eating the Illini up. On the auction, Dickey kicks his way inside for about a yard. That's all there was. Pretty quick coverage by Illinois' number 97, Garrett. Third down and nine. Tough day for the Michigan cheerleaders, too, since they do back semis off the wall here for every point the Wolverines score after each touchdown. So it's, I don't even want to think how many they did today. Washington makes the catch and the carry down to the seven-yard line of Illinois. I'll tell you, that's a real good catch by Fred Brockington. He's been much maligned as a receiver by some people, but I'll tell you what, he makes an outstanding catch here down the sidelines, lays out, cradles the ball in, in close, one-on-one -on -one with Armstead, and boy, Armstead's had a rough day today having to cover those people as General Bo, I'm sure, is a little bit more pleased with what's happening here late than what was going on early. Rocky's in a big play receiver. His first catch for 25 yards. This one goes for 41 yards. And Michigan knocking on the door in the final two minutes. Touchdown! Touchdown! Dickey! To, is that Hassel? If they let him go, I'll know it's Tom Hassel. Good play in that they fake the run, and Hassel goes out like he's going to block, turns it inside, and then just heads for the corner. He's wide open. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Finally, Dickie <laughs> delivers it, and Hassel, waiting there for it, says, hey, all right, I got myself a touchdown. And that's good to see, because Hassel has played a long, long time here, and, you know, he never gets that much chance, but here against Illinois, he does, and he makes good on it. Ali Haji Sheik. Makes good on the conversion for the 10th time this afternoon with a minute 43 left to play. It's Michigan 70, Illinois 21. Hodgie Sheep with a Michigan record, 10 extra points, will kick off again. His legs got to be getting tired. Kirby Wilson takes it just inside the end zone. And Kyle Keck chases him out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. Hard to remember that at the half, this was 28-21 Michigan, and a game that was very much up for grabs. And also hard to remember that back there in the first quarter, it was 21-7 Illinois. 
since that time, Michigan has gone on a 63 to nothing run. 42 here in the second half. Dickey leading that last touchdown drive. First and 10, 12 yard line for Illinois. They run the draw, and it works. Joe Curtis still on his feet, out over the 25 to about the 28 yard line. It'll be first down. Tim Anderson made the tackle. Tony Eason looking to the sideline for instruction. There's the drive engineered by Dickey. 60 yards, five plays. DJ passing to Hassel. Another running play. I want to keep the clock going, I think. Curtis dives up short of the 35-yard line. A minute five left. Second down and three. Although they are huddling rather quickly. It's not as if Illinois is trying to run out the clock and keep Michigan from scoring again. Now Eason goes to the air. He got his man. Passmore <laughs> is the receiver, and that's got to be the most appropriate name on the back of any Illinois jersey. and 10, 38 seconds to play. Illinois has the ball at its own 42-yard line. But they have no chance in this one. Little complete pass to fullback Mike Murphy, and he is out to about the 49. 52 passes for Eason, 30 completions, 380 yards. 14 seconds to play. Nine seconds as the crowd counts it off. Last play of the game, perhaps. Eason keeps it, and that will enable the clock to run out, and it does. As Michigan pounds Illinois into submission, 70 to 21. Mike White had an early lead and had Michigan on the run, but simply couldn't keep them there. Smith with another great afternoon. Anthony Carter with a great afternoon. And Michigan left with two games to play and two victories necessary as they go to Lafayette, Indiana next week and come back home against Ohio State the following Saturday. Larry Adderley for Jim Brandsetter inviting you to join us next week as the Wolverines travel to West Lafayette, Indiana to take on the Boiler Majors of Purdue. Once again, the final score this afternoon, Michigan 70, Illinois 21. The executive producer of On TV Sports is John Tuohy. Our associate producers are Michael Smith and William Glenn. Our production assistant is Carolyn Mellon. This has been a sports presentation of National Subscription Television. Thank you.